Here's something that sounds mathematically impossible. When you save your first $100,000, you're actually one third of the way to becoming a millionaire. How can you be a third of the way there when you've only made a 10% dent? The answer reveals one of the most misunderstood truths about wealth. And once you understand it, you'll realize why the people who make it to $100,000 almost always go on to become millionaires, and why so many people never do. If you've looked at your investment portfolio lately and got depressed, I've got some good news for you. You can be one of the ones who get there too, because the first $100,000 isn't just a milestone. It's the moment the entire wealth building journey flips in your favor. I'm Seth. I'm a former attorney who worked in banking and fintech for years. I know firsthand how little some people learn about personal finance or investing in school or otherwise, so I wanted to help out where I could. That's why I started this channel. But just because I worked in banking doesn't mean my personal finances have always been in order. Some of the things in my videos I've had to learn the hard way. But one thing I've learned is that if you have enough discipline, patience, and consistency, you can improve your financial situation, often dramatically. And that's my hope for you. And if you want to get control of your finances, I put a link to a financial fundamentals bundle in the description that may help. Here's what we'll cover today. The math behind getting to $1 million. Why the first $100,000 is the hardest. The psychological shift $100,000 can provide and when and how compounding flips the game in your favor. But before we get into the math behind the journey, let's talk about the engine driving the bus. Compounding. A lot of people talk about compound interest, but most people don't really understand how powerful it is. It's been called the eighth wonder of the world, but what really matters is that compounding is exponential, not linear. It doesn't grow at a steady pace every year. It snowballs, slow at first, then violently fast. Compound interest works like this. Your money earns returns, and then those returns earn returns, and then those additional returns on returns earn even more returns. It's a snowball effect that starts slow but accelerates dramatically over time. In the early years, the growth feels pathetic, it feels pointless. But compounding isn't designed for the early years, it's designed for the later years. Now let's look at the math behind the journey. What actually happens when you invest $500 a month and earn an average 8% return? But first, why am I using 8% and a $500 per month contribution? Why not 12% and $1,000 per month? Simple, because I want this to be realistic and conservative, reachable by most anyone with the desire to do it. Most people can save $500 a month by eating out less, driving their used car an extra year or two, eliminating subscriptions and memberships they aren't using, and investing their windfalls, tax refunds, raises, and bonuses. I'm using 8% even though the stock market's long-term average return is 10% because I'm adjusting for inflation. This isn't a pie-in-the-sky plan, it's doable. So back to the math, the initial climb is brutal. It takes around 12 years to reach your first $100,000. In those 12 years, you'll contribute $72,000 of your own money, and compounding will contribute roughly $28,000. You're doing most of the heavy lifting. Your money hasn't had enough time to help you yet. But something remarkable happens once you hit $100,000. Going from $100,000 to $200,000 takes around 6 years. And this time, you only contribute $36,000 while compounding adds around $64,000. In other words, the growth flips. Compounding is doing nearly twice as much work as you. The third $100,000 takes about four years. You put in around $24,000, but compounding adds roughly $76,000. Your contributions matter less and less, and your balance matters more and more. By the time you reach $1 million around year 35, you will have contributed about $216,000 and compounding will have contributed roughly $784,000. Your money outworked you by almost four to one. This is why the first $100,000 is one third of the journey. It's the steepest part of the hill. But once you get over that ridge, the rest becomes faster, easier, and increasingly automatic. Of course, the first $100,000 is also the hardest. Charlie Munger didn't sugarcoat it. He said the first $100,000 is a bitch, and he was right. It's the most mentally and emotionally difficult part of the wealth journey. 
Not because the math is hard, but because growth is painfully slow and almost all of it comes from your own effort. Saving the first $10,000, $20,000, or even $50,000 feels endless and requires discipline, sacrifices, and saying no to most of the things your friends and coworkers say yes to. The first $100,000 requires budgeting, consistency, emotional control, resisting lifestyle creep, and staying invested through every market dip. Most people never develop these habits. They expect compounding to feel exciting in the beginning, and when it doesn't, they quit. Don't be like most people, because the people who stick it out long enough to see real compounding are the ones who break through. They experience the first moment when their money earns more in a year than they contribute. And that changes everything. You see, the biggest difference after $100,000 may not be in your portfolio balance, it may be in your head. The psychological shift $100,000 provides. There's a moment every investor experiences that is hard to describe until you felt it. It happens somewhere around $100,000. You open your investment account and realize it grew more in the last month than you used to contribute in six. The growth becomes visible, meaningful, and motivating. At that moment, investing stops being something you're forcing yourself to do and becomes something you're excited to continue. After $100,000, you no longer need motivation. You have momentum. You stop obsessing over small dips because you finally understand cycles. You stop chasing the next hype stock because you trust the long-term plan. You stop seeing investing as a chore and start seeing it as a machine that builds your future in the background. People who reach $100,000 behave differently from the people who never do. And that behavioral shift alone is one of the biggest reasons the rest of the journey becomes easier. Of course, seeing how fast compounding accelerates over time after you hit $100,000 doesn't hurt either. Because $100,000 is when your money starts outworking you. At the beginning, your contributions are responsible for almost all of your growth. In year one, you invest $6,000 and compounding maybe adds a few hundred dollars. In years two, three, four, five, and six, same story. But once you hit $100,000, the equation flips. You invest $6,000 and compounding adds $8,000. Your money is finally working harder than you are. At $300,000, an 8% return earns $24,000 a year, four times what you contributed. At $500,000, it's $40,000. Compounding is now doing three or four times more than you. And from this point on, it becomes very difficult not to become wealthy as long as you stay invested. This is the moment the wealth game becomes unfair in your favor. So if all of this is true, why do so many people never reach $100,000? The answer is equal parts surprising and equal parts discouraging. It's because the first $100,000 requires consistency most people aren't willing to practice. It requires giving up instant gratification in a world built entirely on it. It requires staying invested when the market drops and everyone around you panics. It requires living below your means while your peers flex with things they can't afford. It requires understanding that slow is normal in the beginning and not a sign of failure. Most people fail not because of income, but because of behavior. The first $100,000 isn't valuable just because of the number itself. It's valuable because you've learned discipline, you've built momentum, you've trained your mind to delay gratification, you've automated your financial life, you've proven to yourself that you can do hard things consistently. Once you've built the behaviors required to reach $100,000, the habits that carry you to $1 million are already in place. Wealth stops being an emotional battle and becomes a mechanical process. At this point, you should understand the journey to $1 million isn't linear, it's exponential. The first $100,000 is the steepest and hardest part, the longest grind and the biggest mental test. But once you break through, everything accelerates. You've crossed the psychological threshold where you trust compounding, you trust the process, and you've trained yourself to stay consistent. And that's why $100,000 isn't just 10% of the journey to $1 million. It's one third of the journey for those who make it there. Where are you right now? Still pushing toward your first $100,000? Already past it and feeling the momentum? Or just beginning to take it seriously? Wherever you are, remember this. Every dollar you invest today will do more work than any dollar you invest later 
because it has more time to compound. And if this video changed how you think about that first $100,000, hit that subscribe button. We publish fresh content weekly on practical ways to grow your wealth. If you want to get control of your finances, I put a link to a financial fundamentals bundle in the description that may help. Check it out. But before you go, there are daily habits that makes everything you just learned work much faster. They're easy, take almost no time, and honestly, can separate people who stay stuck from people who build real wealth. There's a breakdown in the next video, and if you skip it, you're wasting some of the momentum you just gained here. So click on the video on your screen. Do this every day and it's impossible to stay poor. I'll see you there.